someone ever told me that adoption should not define your life, but I cannot help but not to think about it because the consequences are still very present in my daily life. It can be from being very sensible, neurotic, lacking confidence, fear of rejection, having ADHD, even when that's never officially confirmed, and being a tiring person. That is what people told me because I talk a lot and I skip easily from one subject to another. Also, I am chaotic, messy, and I have many hobbies, passions, even obsessions, which are always changing too. I am impatient, impulsive, and I have strong mood swings. Also, I am still confronted with adoption because of my Asian appearance in a place where there are not that many Asians or even none of them. The fact that people are even staring at me when I'm just in a supermarket or always asking me questions when they first see me. Well, I was not even thinking about that. It makes me thrown back into the reality of being different or different looking. In the beginning this year, I went to see my Korean family and my sister was talking about my adoption, how they felt about it and how much uh, it impacted their lives. She said that the death of a father or sister and my adoption were one of the most traumatic experiences they've been through. And I can tell you that they went through so much more. So having listened to all those hardships and all those traumatic events they went through and still they are struggling today, I went from feeling abandoned and rejected to someone who was unbelievably loved and I know they released me from a hard and difficult life up there. And I was even ashamed that I was always thinking about my own suffering, but never about theirs and how they went through all this. Of course, I could imagine my biological mother being sad, but my comprehension never went further than that. Being different can be a good thing as well. By example, I remember when I was a child, we went to a theater and the performing musician on stage asked for assistance. So everyone wanted to go on stage, of course, and the musician was looking around. But when he saw me, I was immediately chosen. And I experienced this kind of favoritism over and over again till today. Because people notice me immediately and they don't forget me. So that is an unfair advantage, which helps me a lot to stand out. So it can be also very helpful to be different. I don't want to make this like a misplaced motivational video. I am not an expert in adoption. I'm not a psychologist or whatsoever, but I just wanted to share my story about the topic of being thankful for your adoption. Today, as an adult, having children from my own flesh and blood, and having interacted with my Korean family, I am able to feel compassion for them and also feel, feeling sorry for them instead. I wanted people to feel sorry for me. So thanks to the story of my sister, I am happy that she gave me the feeling being thankful. That was her greatest gift to me. And I'm not talking about outsiders who are forcing us adoptees being grateful. So we just shut up. I'm only talking about my dearest sister and she shared uh, their story of their life with me without any secrets and that proved to me that they trust me and seeing me still as their family. It was one of the saddest but also the most beautiful moments of my life. So thank you so much dear sister. This video is dedicated to you.